Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here today at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, and we're here today with Dr. Brian Redmond. Thank you so much for talking with us. Certainly. You are the director of archaeology program here and the curator of archaeology, which means what? What does that really entail? What does that get into? Well, uh, curator means I'm in charge of the archaeology collection, and curator just means caretaker, someone that's basically in charge of the uh, studies the collection, knows something about what it represents in terms of the, uh, the archaeology of the region. Uh, and I'm head of the department because it's a functioning department, one of 11 different collection departments at the museum. So you guys are actively out adding to this collection. You, you have a huge collection. It's almost, what, 750,000 specimens? It's actually more than that now. We have uh, 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 more than 3,000 site collections, wow. which means artifacts of any number from 3,000 or more sites. But if you count everything up, we have uh, over a million specimens now in our collection. And you're keeping them all down here in the basement of the Museum no, of Natural History? Almost. About a third of our collection is down here, wow. and there's about two-thirds that are up in storage. No kidding. Yeah. That is so awesome. Talk about the sites that you are an expert in, because really you, you've done this your entire career, uh, and you've stayed in this region a lot, right, in northern Ohio? Uh, most recently in northern Ohio since I've been at the museum. Actually, I started out in northern Ohio at the University of Toledo for right. my undergraduate work, and I did a lot of northern Ohio archaeology. Uh, I went to Indiana University for my graduate work and did a lot of work in the Ohio Valley, in southern Indiana, northern Kentucky. Uh, but then I came back to the museum 17 years ago and I've been primarily focusing on uh, northeast and north central Ohio in terms of the, the Native American sites, the archaeology and prehistory right. of this area. There's some really cool uh, mound sites that you have been looking at, these ancient woodland earthworks, and you're doing a curator's forum on uh, Wednesday, April 6th about these these earthworks that you found here in northern Ohio. We're, we're, we're pretty familiar, a lot of people, with the ones in southern Ohio because right. they're really world famous. But you found sort of a, a branch of the, uh, what, the same Hopewell culture that's doing something up here in northern Ohio. Yeah, the, the, the site we're looking at is called the Heckelman site, and it's in the Huron River Valley near Milan, Ohio. And it's a bit unusual because it has artifacts that seem to, be, to come from southern Ohio, from what are called Hopewell culture sites. Hmm. Uh, uh, south of Columbus for the most part. Usually those kinds of artifacts aren't found in northern Ohio, uh, but they seem to be in concentration at this site and just a couple other sites in the Huron Valley. And do you know why uh, there's some of these artifacts found their way? Because it's a very concentrated area, a couple acres that you found with a right. lot of these artifacts. At this particular site, uh, there's about four acres where we find artifacts uh, in the fields after they're plowed in the spring. Uh, so it covers a large area, and then there seem to be some earthworks across this area. Uh, and mostly these are, are seen as ditches that the mm -hmm. Indians dug in the ground to enclose an area of a bluff top overlooking the Huron River. And you don't know if this was for ceremonial purposes or religious purposes or, or well, why? Well, that's what we're looking at. The most unusual earthwork is kind of an oval or egg-shaped earthwork that's about 150 feet across. And it, uh, as we excavated it, it's a ditch. It's a ditch feature about uh, three and a half feet across and maybe four feet deep that has pottery and stone tools that date to about 300 B.C. Wow. And that actually predates the Hopewell culture. So people were there even before uh, other people might have been coming with these Hopewell artifacts. And are these related to the Hopewell artifacts? Can you see some of the same uh, similar qualities in, in each of them so you know yeah. they're from the yeah, same culture? I can culture. show you a couple of things Please. that we have. Uh, the most kind of conspicuous type of artifact that's typical of the Hopewell are what are called bladelets. And this is a, it's like a stone razor blade. It's a long flake of uh, chert, we call it, or flint. And it's made of this colorful material uh, called flint ridge flint that comes from near Newark, Ohio. Uh, and it is, uh, again, uh, made in a special way. It's made from prepare cores. And you only really find those on Hopewell culture sites, again, usually in southern Ohio. Uh -huh. But there's hundreds of them at the Heckelman site. Wow. And these even predate some of the stuff down south. Well, they, they're about the same date. The, the oval enclosure is even before that. I see. So there's actually several different occupations. People were there uh, maybe as early as 300 B.C. They were there during the Hopewell time, maybe around two to 400 A.D. And then again, about 1400 A.D. And that might have been a large village site occupation. No kidding. So they reused these same sites, just like churches got exactly. reused and you're finding artifacts. Yeah. Uh, from different centuries, really, in right. the same place. And at certain times they built earthworks, other times they didn't. Right. And they used them, they filled them, and then they did other kinds of ways of living in that area. But it's, it's a special place that people kept coming back to for thousands of years. Right. 
something holy about that, that space. Something, right? and maybe even the bigger landscape, the views you have from there, the yeah. relationship to the river and things like that. Right, right. It's not near the lake. It's, it's inland. Quite no, it's several right? miles up the river right. from the lake. Right. right. You have a cool blog that, uh, where you talk about some of this stuff, and it really is fascinating. You found this one artifact that has these little feathered designs that, that right, someone right. almost show this one to us because I think it's fascinating. Uh, someone almost just sort of tossed it aside. I mean, they didn't throw it out, but you until you washed it off, you didn't even see we this. We didn't know this it was anything special. It's a uh, um, a piece of siltstone. It's a kind of very common type of stone in that valley. Uh, but the, the special thing is it is engraved. It has a, a, a fine line engraving of what I think are feathers, kind of a spray of feathers. Sure. And, uh, something, some people said it looks like a turkey tail or something like that. Right. But it definitely was engraved by people, and it came from a pit feature that may date to the Hopewell time or just after that. And these were, these were decorated. I mean, this is decorative, not uh, something that occurred naturally. No, definitely. This is not natural markings. These were deliberately mm -hmm. put on there. For why, we don't know. We don't know the reason. Uh, there's some symbolism. They could have been an amulet right. used by a, a medicine person, right. something like that. Uh, we don't know. And they were made, used, and they were discarded in these pits. You have others that where, where they took string or cord and in the process of uh, uh, heating up these, these pieces of pottery, they burn these, these sort of patterns into it. Actually, these are, you're right, these are uh, what we call cord markings. Uh, they're very fine, these vertical uh, parallel lines of very finely uh, twisted cordage made out of natural fibers. Uh, this is what we call a surface treatment. It was applied probably to the whole pot, to right. a cooking pot. And it was applied actually when the, the pot was wet before it was fired. Mm. And it's just kind of a texturing, a, maybe a decoration on the outside. But what's interesting is these cord marks change over time. They get thicker to thinner, and we actually can almost date the pot based on the forms of these cord right. marks. So it's almost like fashion comes into style exactly. and changes it's, over it's time. It's style in a lot of ways. And you're really, you're really a puzzle uh, solver. Right? Everything here is a little puzzle piece, literally pieces that you're gluing together, but also the puzzle of civilization and what they were doing at the time, what these pieces meant, how they fit into their culture. Right. Archaeologists are really anthropologists. I mean, we, we study anthropology. We really try to get at the human cultures behind these artifacts. But archaeology is a study of the past. We can't talk to these people. We can't interview them about their culture. Right. So what we have are these, these objects from the archaeological record. And we have to make interpretations from really what are dead objects and to talk about living people. And that's the, really the science of archaeology. It's fascinating. And people can, uh, that are members here anyways can join you. Uh, it's called the uh, Archaeology in Action, a summer field school program that right. takes place in the summer. And they can come for what, one week or three weeks, five weeks? And yeah, it, it's our main field excavation of the year. This is where we go out and do our field research, but we take uh, lots of museum members with us. Uh, they come out for one week, uh, Monday through Friday. They drive out to the site, they bring their lunch. We teach them how to do excavations, how to record information, and they can come back for, for one up to five different weeks. Wow. any one season. And people do come back again and again because they find it pretty, it's, it's fun. It's hot, it's dirty, but it's fun. <laughs> they really enjoy it. Sounds it sounds like fun. And they do this work. They're the ones that find these objects. You've been doing this for uh, your entire career. When you talk here at the Curators Forum coming up in April, what are you going to talk about? What are you going to show? And what, what can people expect from that? I'm going to show some of these objects, some of these artifacts that I talked about today. Uh, a lot of pictures of the site and kind of take you through the story of the site itself, why we're interested in it, how we ended up getting there, and then what we've done over the last two years to try to uncover something about one part of this site, which is this oval enclosure area. It, you know, it sounds fascinating. It, it sounds like you've got a great job. I can tell I you about it. I love my job, yeah. It's a great job. <laughs> can't get, believe you get paid to do this, right? Yeah, but I don't <laughs> tell anybody that. Right. <laughs> right. We'll keep it secret. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much, Brian, for talking with us. My fascinating. pleasure. Fascinating. Thank my you. My pleasure. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.